Hello guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Samira and today we're going to be talking about the top 10 highest rated books on my Goodreads want to read shelf. Surprisingly, I actually do have a mix of genres in here. Uh, promise, it's not all fantasy. When I actually went into my Goodreads and um, checked the list out, I was surprised because uh, there are books in there that I added many years ago and I completely forgotten about them and uh, this video was a good idea for me to go and check those out to see if I still want to read them. So on the 10th spot, we have The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This is a fantasy published in 2020, so it's fairly recent. I don't know very much about the plot of this book, but I decided I want to read it because of the cover mainly and because it looked very cute and lighthearted and again the house on top of that uh, sort of hill reminded me of Howl's Moving Castle and I felt yeah I should check this out probably it's a fairly short read not short average read um, I know there's been some controversial discussions about it um, about the Canadian stuff uh, I don't know I don't know much about them I myself wanted to check the book out because of the vibes. It seems a fun, quick read to me and I like the cover so I think I will be reading it pretty not maybe in the next few months but I I will read it pretty soon. Number nine is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Now this was published in 2017 and I kind of couldn't believe it. I felt like it was very much more recent than that but time flies. Uh, so it was published in 2017 and I still haven't read it because it seems a bit outside my comfort zone. It's historical, I don't know if it's historical fiction or is it domestic fiction. I know there's a bit of romance, seven husbands, I, I don't know. Uh, but it was outside my comfort zone. I was scared because the Hollywood vibes and the uh, gossip, I don't know if it's gossipy. I'm just guessing. The cover seems very intriguing, but still I, I didn't know if I would like it and everyone else really loved this book. I mean, this is um, one of the top favorite books of some booktubers. Uh, so I didn't know, I thought I should check it out, but I don't know if I would like it myself. I I might, I still might, I don't know. Um, when a book is very hyped in the booktube community, I kind of get afraid to read it, especially if it's outside my comfort zone. I'm like, what if I don't like it? Everyone's so passionate about this book. What if? I don't end up liking it. So this is rated 4.45 and I think that's a very high rate and I might give it a chance. Yeah. Number eight is The Sword of Kaijin, another fantasy. This one's a standalone and it was published in 2019. This one's rated 4.46 which is still pretty high. Um, I will be reading it very soon, honestly. I mean as soon as I opened the list and I saw Sword of Kaijin there, I was like, yeah, I will read it. It's a, this is a very readable book, even though I don't know much about the story. I know it's a, a mother and son and the war is coming. It's about a family, essentially. The war is coming and they're going to be uh, affected by it, obviously. Um, that's all I know. I really don't know much about the plot and it's not the plot that got me in. Uh, it's the amount of praise this book actually got from different YouTubers, different booktubers. Uh, and they all loved it. I don't remember a single person saying I didn't like the Sword of Kaijin. Everyone enjoyed it. So this is a very readable book to me and I'll be picking it, picking it up soon, uh, especially because it's a standalone and uh, I'm not worried about uh, starting a series when I already have many ongoing series at the moment. So yeah, I'll be reading it. Number seven, The Help by uh, Catherine Stockett. This one I actually completely forgot about because it's been so long. This one's been published in 2009. Uh, there was a movie in 2011. That's what I watched um, and started to put this on my TBR. Hang on. Uh, it was rated 4.47. The Help is a uh, historical fiction. Uh, many of you probably know it because of the movie. Uh, it also won the Goodreads Choice Award uh, the same year in 2009 when it came out uh, for Best Fiction. So when the movie came out in 2011, I loved the cast. I was, they were so amazing. And as soon as I found out this movie is based on a novel, 
I put it on my TBR and I was like, I am absolutely going to read this. I'm probably going to enjoy it. Many people gave good reviews and uh, a very high rate to this book. So number six is House of uh, Blood and Earth. Earth and Blood? Earth and Blood. House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. Uh, this is the first book in the Crescent City series. I haven't started the series. Um, this one was published in 2020 and it has a rating of 4.48. Uh, I haven't started Crescent City because um, when I read Sergey Mass, I do read her books, um, but I like to put a specific amount of space between the books, especially within the series, so I won't mix them up together. They, they have a tendency to mix up for me. I know they're very different, their settings are different, but uh, yeah, that happens. And although it's been a while since I've finished Kingdom of Ash, um, I don't know, I still don't know, should I start reading it? Uh, and also, I have the fourth book in the, what is it, Akatar series, uh, Court of Silver Flames, I think it's called, the fourth book about Nesta. Uh, I want to read that, and considering it's attached to the other three books, I might read, read that first and then start the Crescent City, I don't know, tell me what you think. I don't want them to mix up, so I've been waiting to read that first and then come to this book. I might do that. Tell me what you think. Number five is Skybard by Brandon Sanderson. I've been wanting to read this book since it came out in 2018, I think. Yeah, 2018. Uh, it's rated 4.49, pretty high. And yeah, it's sci-fi. I don't really need much uh, to start reading this book. It's Sanderson, I wanna read it, but uh, the same story goes with this one. I want to read the Mistborn Trilogy Era 1 at least before I start reading this, yeah. But I'm very, uh, I'm very excited. I will no doubt be reading this book in the future, yeah. I just have to be fast with reading Sanderson. Number four is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Ruthvas. I had this book for a while now, this and the next one, the first two books, for a while now. It was published in 2007. So it's been many years, unbelievably, and the third book is still not coming out, so that's why I haven't been reading it. I was like, let's, I was like, let's wait for the start of a whisper coming so I can be sure that the third book is near, and then I start reading it. Okay, the wind is crazy strong outside, just shook the door. <laughs> Alright, so back to this. Number four, The Name of the Wind, Patrick Christmas, is rated 4.52. Yeah, I told you about why I'm not, I haven't picked this up. I have them right here on my shelf, the first two books. Uh, I haven't read it because I'm scared there's going to be a very long wait till the third book comes out and the flame would die for me and I would have to reread the books. So I was like, I have many uh, ongoing series right now. Let's finish them first and then start a new one. Even though I'm very excited, the magic school and everything in this book seems awesome. Everyone loved it and I'm sure I will too, but uh, I'll, I'll be waiting a bit more before I get into it, but I'm really excited about it. On the third spot is A Storm of Sword, the third book in A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. Um, this one also came out in 2003 and it's rated 4.54. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll be reading this book. The same goes with this one because the last books are not um, coming out anytime soon apparently. Uh, I'm a bit discouraged. I'm waiting for them. I'm waiting for signs of uh, life, you know. I'm waiting for those to see if I want to read the rest of them. I will read them. I enjoy um, A Song of Ice and Fire very much. I have it right here. Uh, I read the first two and the third one I haven't started and I'll be reading it. Just, I don't know when. <laughs> They're pretty long. The book, a number two spot actually surprised me a lot because I, again, completely forgotten about this book, even though I have it. Hang on. The Nightingale by Christine Hanna. Um, this is another historical rom historical fiction, um, came out in 2015, it's rated, let me check, 
4.6, so very high. Uh, I've been wanting to read this book for years now. Um, to tell you why I haven't picked it up yet is because uh, this is very much outside my comfort zone. And uh, on top of it being a historical fiction, it's about the war. And I, I really, uh, I need to be in a very positive mind space to read about it, it's I, I fear it would be very depressing and very sad. Uh, even it might not be. I don't know much about this book. I I don't remember. It was about sisters, I think. I I don't remember. This one also received very high praise uh, by many booktubers. Um, again, the only reason I haven't picked it up yet is because uh, it's promised to be sad, and the word is already in. A, and right now, the word is in a very dark space to me and I can't handle it right now. I need uh, more positivity and I it's a spring. I, I, I don't want to read this yet, but I will in the future. I'm pretty sure it's a very good book. And it's on second spot. I, I was surprised. I didn't expect uh, something non-fantasy to be on the second spot, but this is a sign. I should read this probably. Now finally, on the first spot, no surprise here, is The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, the first book in the Stormlight Archive. I cannot tell you how much I want to read this book. It was published in 2010, so it's been a while, and uh, it's rated very high. Yeah, it has a very high rating. 4.65. Yeah, that's amazing. These ones are pretty thick books, and everyone's loving them. The reason I'm not reading it is the same as Skyboard Sanderson. I have to catch up to his work, I have to finish Mistborn. I will promise very soon finish Arrow 1. And then um, I want, I want, I really want to start reading The Way of Kings. I don't know if I should. My mind keeps telling me that I have to go back and read The Wheel of Times first. I know it's Robert Jordan, but uh, I have this thing that I, my mind tells me you have to read those first, the earlier ones first, and then come to the new ones. But I also want to be along with everyone else on this journey as it's ongoing, you know. The books are coming out, excitement is high, I want to join in. I really do. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna love these books. It's a long series, I think it's 10 books. So each one of them is at least around a thousand pages. And that's so good. I mean, come on. Fantasy cannot get any better. So yeah, I, I'm really excited about uh, this one, this, this, well, ha, I'm too excited. The Way of Kings uh, ending up on my first spot. I was really excited. That I was like, this is a sign. You have to read it first. I don't know. So you guys tell me if you've read this. Tell me if I should um, jump right into the Stormlight Archive after I finish Mistborn Era 1. I, I think I might give in and finally do that. Yeah, because cause it takes too much time to read all the Wheel of Time series. They're too long. I mean, there, there's too many books in there, and I, I'm at least it's going to take a year, if not two. Yeah, it's the door again. The wind is... Yeah. All right, so these were my top 10 highest rated books on... Um, my want to read shelves and in goodreads uh, let me know in the comment section which one do you like best which one do you think i should prioritize uh, give me advice i don't know which one should i pick up first this video was a lot more fun than i thought it would be because it reminded me of my uh, past passions of some of the books i've forgotten and also it kind of brought the itch to read the way of kings i i'm really tempted I will be putting the Goodread links uh, for each of these books uh, down in the description box for you guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.